is our tasting tray. We start with a mid strength and work our way around to my more challenging beers. Yep. Um, so we like to like to start people off a little bit easy. Um, and unlike some people, we like to try and brew the beers as true to style here. That's that's our game here. Consistency, making the beer, try and educate people um, about beer styles. So yeah, absolutely. So instead of just your generic lager that people can pick up anywhere, you've you've started nice and simple tasting tray. Yeah, give it a bit styles, of variety. Yep. Um, just give people a bit of uh, education into beer and the different styles um, and that's the great thing about Australia we're such a young brewing culture that um, we get to brew all these different beers from all over the world right. so a bit of German influence here a bit of Australian a bit of American so yep. and the amazing thing is is people will probably be thinking oh what's a what's a Kolsch and when they try it they probably go oh this tastes like this yeah, or it's very of, similar to yeah, that and a then lot of the penny it, drops and then they go, oh, I'm going to start drinking this. And yeah, and that's a lot, because we're such a touristy area, we get a lot of uh, people coming in going, oh, what have you got closest to VB? What have you got? Hard yeah, super dry and stuff sure. like that. So Kolsch is the perfect style for all the, the, uh, the mild, which is our only lager in the range, mid-strength lager, okay. nice yeah. and easy drinking. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you want to start with that one, feel yeah, free to have sure. a sip and I'll uh, have a little talk about it. And the, the tasting trays, absolutely fantastic idea. I think this is one yeah. of the best things to get people interested and then they find one they like and sit on that all afternoon. Totally agree, like it's the best way to uh, introduce people into beer because they don't want to buy a whole pint of something they're not going to like, like it's just like in a bottle shop, so yeah. perfect way to introduce people into a little bit of beer, find what they like, so. I like that. Yeah, so that was our uh, first uh, trophy winning beer that uh, Justin dreamed up. It's a mid-strength lager as such, German style Pilsner based, um, Pil or Pilsner malt, um, and then using a lot of SARS hops to give you that real nice refreshment and lightness yeah. and crisps. Uh, spicy, uh, grassy flavours. It's so. got that good malt, malt character. Yeah, it's got the malt sweetness well. at the front. It's actually got some flavour to it. Yeah, and that's what I like. Like uh, being a Queenslander myself, it's all about mid strength. So <laughs> um, I'm quite proud to brew a, a mid strength yeah. with lots of flavour. No, uh, so, and that's what you want. Next one in the range is our Kolsch. Uh, we like to say it's a, an ale impersonating a lager, so funny enough, <laughs> it is an ale. Um, okay. It's just fermented at cooler temperatures, sure. um, so the yeast isn't so aggressive on their esters yep. and flavours. So um, really nice and light, delicate. Same thing again, a little bit of sweet malt at the front, and then a really nice European noble hops at the back for that uh, earthy uh, flavour. A little bit of bitterness there, nice and light. Yeah, you can no, drink it all day long. Yeah, that is a good session beer. Mm. Yeah, great, great way. It's a bit like your. Uh, Pacific Ales or anything like that, great to get people into the craft beer. Like, it's just a perfect gateway beer. That's what I've always said about the Kolsch. Yeah. yeah, they're certainly one of those beers. Great. And there's a bit of an affiliation for it here in uh, WA with myself, Eagle Bay, Colonial, we're all brewing Kolsch's. Yeah, Gage Rose does a Kolsch. So, okay, yes, yes, uh, yes. I think it's just that approachable beer that's yeah. an easy sell here in the summer months. Well, that's right. It's and Because people hear ale, yeah. and they think it's a winter beer, or they... they it's going to be they, a big flavour. They make that link, yeah. and then they think, oh, you can't drink an ale in summer. Yes. It's, it's, talk to anyone else from any, anywhere else in the world, and it's a complete opposite. So, yeah, oh, I totally agree. Yeah. Go on to the wheat beer. Yeah, the wheat beer. So uh, it's a bit of an Australian style Belgian wit. So uh, in the traditional way that normally uh, Belgian wheat beer is uh, with orange or coriander. Yes. I still use the coriander seed, but instead of uh, the orange peel, I'm using a little bit of Australian galaxy hop to give you that real nice fruitiness. So uh, not 100% in style, but pretty close. So just nice light. 50% wheat, 50% barley gives that real light refreshment. Yeah, yeah. Clean palate, uh, really nice clean colour and uh, that coriander and fruit should be coming through the back really nice and light. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, the women generally like this one better because it's the lowest in bitterness. Like, yep, wheat beers sure. are generally lowest in yep. bitterness. I find females can be a little bit astringent to bitterness or they pick it up a lot easier. So sure, this sure. is a massive seller for us, for the yep. ladies, to bring them into craft yep. beer. Just that little bit of cloudiness just yeah. to give you that... Residual yeast, it's it unfiltered the, yeah, beer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep, so yep. the first two you had were filtered, just for yes. the cleanliness, but yep. this is the first one in my range that's unfiltered. I think some of the wheat beers are better. Yeah. They, 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 I think yeast should be. It, it, it produces the beer flavours for you, so it's why not leave it in well. the beer? Yeah. <laughs> 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 can preserve the beer sometimes too, so it's yeah. good to have it around. Exactly. So, uh, exactly. The next one is my Australian style pale ale, it's a bit right. like Cooper's Green, um, but that's yes. what it's based around. So, yeah. with everyone going crazy for the American hops and loving American pales and all, and all that kind of thing, we thought an Australian pale is still a really good beer and to educate people. And obviously, yeah, sure. uh, nail ale is a different uh, oh. shower of that, but he makes a really good pale ale. So, real nice, bready, yeasty characters with a slight, slight oh, yeah. little fruitiness. Yep. Uh, more yeah, yeast and malt driven than your typical American that's all hop driven yes, or an English style that's yep. a little bit more mellow. And I think, I mean, I'm, I, I like the American 
pale ales, yeah. the real West Coast yeah. hot bombs. Yeah. I'm a big fan of those. I was a little bit spoilt when I did go to the US <laughs> um, and got highly addicted to them, and I make those, so I'm a big fan of those. But it's yeah, nice and refreshing to yeah. have have a good Aussie Aussie pale ale. Yeah, I'm I'm quite proud of it. I think. Uh, Australia's need to start cutting their own way soon and start developing our own style so I we're agree. not copying yep. it too much and yep. we're starting to get some really good hops here now so why not start using Australian ingredients because it's, there's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely. Here at the Frio Doctor, it's a uh, specialist bottle shop in Fremantle, just off uh, Arundel Street. We were talking about ciders earlier on at the Sail and Anchor. Um, these sort of specialist bottle shops are absolutely fantastic if you want to get into the styles of beers, but also of ciders and ginger beer. So you get a lot of the French uh, ciders, a lot of these Normandy ciders. They're the traditional ciders. Okay, they're not Australian. But these are some of the core ciders that if you really want to get a style and a taste for, uh, you can start looking at. Uh, a lot of the uh, Swedish ciders are very big now. Um, you'll probably see these just about everywhere you go. They add a lot of different fruits, so apple and blackberries uh, and black currants, uh, pears. The pear ciders, which are the perries that we spoke about earlier. Uh, getting onto some of the Australian ciders and the West Australian ciders, um, of course, uh, Matzos, good old Matzos up in Broome, uh, they do a mango cider, uh, so this is the mango cider, but when we spoke about adjuncts previously, we spoke about adding things like bush foods, and Matzos are really leading the charge with using some of these bush foods. Uh, here, this is a mango cider with desert lime, so very refreshing, uh, absolutely fantastic cider to drink. Um, and very easy drinker. They're only 4% alcohol, so great for that hot, uh, humid climate that they're famous for up in Broome, but it also translates beautifully down here in Perth. Another good cider company in Western Australia is The Cidery, uh, down in Bridgetown. If you're that, that, that far south, uh, why not take advantage of a lot of those great apples down there, Bridgetown, Donnybrook Way, where they do grow them. These are, um, these, this cider here, the cidery, the spider cider, it's a dry cider, so not as sweet, quite, um, quite uh, refreshing, and again, purely made from freshly crushed apples, and here they've used the champagne yeast. Unlike mine, which got to 16%, because I didn't really know what I was doing, here, just a nice 5.5% dry cider, which is pretty well spot on for that style. You've got other ones as well, the core, the core cidery, um, we don't have any here, but the core cidery is a, a gold medal winning uh, cidery uh, out uh, Carrigallon Way. Um, so look out for them as well. Um, but again, if you're not too sure, you know, we've got range of ciders to about here. So we've got a huge range of cider and you'll notice the old styles of cider. Very hard to find these days on the shelf. We're getting a much broader taste range for ciders and much better quality uh, cider on the Australian market now. So check it out. One new thing that you're starting to see in some of these specialist bottle shops particularly ones that specialise in beer now, are things called growlers. We have a two litre growler. And for those of you that want to go smaller, we have what's called the one litre squealers. So the little bit of the, the piggy theme there, the squealers and the growlers. However, what are they? Well, they're one litre, as far as the squealer goes, and the growlers are two litres, and they are take home bottles of draft beer. Absolutely fantastic, you can certainly try a, a great range of beers 
from the tap. Uh, they're very popular. They started out uh, uh, becoming very popular in America, where you can literally go to your craft brewery, your craft bar, and order a growler straight over the bar of the beer that you've just been drinking all afternoon and take it home and enjoy it further. They last about, you know, uh, if you keep the, the lid on, a couple of days carbonated um, and still as fresh as draft beer. We've got Sam here from the Frio Doctor Hi. who's going to take us through the whole process. So Sam, what sort of beers do you put on in the growlers and the squealers and, and take us through the whole process? Uh, so all kinds of beers, we got from around the world, we keep them here in the fridge. We get like Rogue and McKellar and just sometimes some from England and New yeah. Zealand. And then um, comes to a big cable over here and then to this thing, our uh, growler system. And then we turn it all on and stick the gas on and went to the bottle in there and pump some gas into it first so once the lid's closed you can keep her up to a month afterwards and then uh, we just turn a little guy on with some gas and get him sitting there for a bit yeah which is thoroughly exciting because I mean everyone's into it and everyone's interested in the bottles and more likely to buy one I guess yep so these are things that as you can see from the, the blackboard once you've finished it, you can basically bring it in for a refill. Yeah, and, totally. Yep. And so then just uh, pay the money for the beer next time. And if you ever don't want the bottle, we just bring it back and trade it over for cash. Great. Fantastic. Cash for more beer. Cash for more beer. <laughs> That's right. So there you go. If you're after something different, you want to try some of the craft beers from maybe overseas, um, McKellar's uh, and the Rogues and, and the like, uh, which are American, uh, New Zealand beers. Um, yeah, find a, a specialist bottle shop, a specialist beer shop that actually serves the, uh, the growlers and, and give it a go. It's a great way to try different styles and uh, different tastes from around the world. Thanks, Sam. No worries, thank you. So over the last few weeks, you've seen us try some of these different beers, uh, whether it be in the restaurants or in the bars. But sometimes it's a little bit hard to try and find them. Most of the good breweries, you've got your nails here. Uh, John's really doing a good job of getting them into a lot of the bottle shops here. Um, but if you are struggling to find those uh, WA smaller craft brews, come to some of these specialist uh, bottle shops here, the specialist beer shops. You've got, you know, your usual little creatures and things. But, you know, those of you who have been out to Feral in the Swan Valley, um, they now serve a lot of beers in stubbies at the specialist bottle shops as well. So come on down to some of these, these great stores. They're doing a really good effort on um, trying to bring in different beers rather than just the usual uh, generic lagers and things like that by the carton. You know, specialist four packs, specialist six packs, and then your individual bottles from around the world. So a great place to come down, try the different styles, and start drinking some of the good local WA craft beers. Okay, so I've got my little squealer here. It's uh, English uh, Wild Raven Black IPA. So it's an IPA from uh, the UK. And I've got a carton of Argentinian beers just to make the Argentinians feel welcome for the Wallabies game on Saturday. Cheers.